Hi, I'm Kirsten, and today I'm joined by Matt and Shiv, who have recently returned from a three-month secondment in Bentleys in Brisbane. Thank you both for joining me today. I'm really keen to hear a bit more about your time on your secondment and in Australia. So what made you want to take part in the International Secondment Program? I think it was just the opportunity to sort of get out of um, my current environment and just sort of try somewhere completely new. Um, sort of meet new people, network a bit and just get experience in working in a completely different environment. I've also always wanted to travel around Australia so the opportunity to go over there for like three months plus uh, was just too good to turn down to be honest. I'd completely agree with Matt, it was a great opportunity to get outside my comfort zone, sort of push my boundaries, you're sort of moving away from you know all your friends, your family, um, you're going to Australia which is completely the other side of the world so it can be a very sort of daunting experience initially. Um, but once you're there, it's, everyone was really friendly, it was really open, they really sort of welcomed you right in and after a f few weeks we just felt right at home. Are there any key learnings you'll be taking away from your time at Bentleys? I think it was just uh, a case of sort of the adaptability and that that I sort of gained from going there. Um, I mean they have a very different sort of working style um, in terms of sort of the length of their jobs and sort of how they mm -hmm. structure deadlines. So. Um, I had to spend a lot more time sort of like managing a lot of different clients at the same time. Okay. Um, as sort of everything sort of overlapped, or as mm -hmm. here, they're sort of sort of longer jobs, so you're sort of on the same thing for a bit longer. Um, so I think that that's certainly something I can bring to my role here. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. I tend to agree. There were it had its own sort of set of challenges. Mm -hmm. The environment was a bit more fast paced, but everyone was also friendlier and they'd you know provide you with the support that you need. Um, there were obviously, like like Matt said, there were nuances between the jobs, between the sort of accounting standards that are applicable in the in our jobs here, as well as the ones over there. Um, but there was quite a bit of overlap and support provided as well, mm -hmm. um, and that sort of helped ease the transition from working here to working there. Um, and was there any key highlights from your time travelling around Australia? I think for me particularly, it was um, going to Australia Zoo. Um, Steve Irwin's obviously been a big hero of mine growing up, and um, just he's had such a sort of impact on my life as you know just watching him on TV every sort of Saturday um, being able to go out there and I think Australia Zoo was the one thing that was on my bucket list that amazing. I was like I need to do this as soon as possible <laughs> and um, go to the croc shows which were, which yeah. were amazing and um, yeah I'm just happy to have got that off my list um, looking forward to going back That's at some great. point. Amazing what about you Matt? Um, I think it would be the Great Barrier Reef, mm -hmm. um, I mean it's sort of famous for a reason and it's just as good there as, as like it's cracked up to be. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to sort of go up there p as part of during work because um, I had a sort of a job up in that sort of area mm -hmm. so I was just able to stay the weekend and then go out to the reef and see everything you'd expect, turtles and whales and manta rays and yeah, yeah it, was just, amazing. it was just amazing. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So would you recommend anyone who gets the opportunity to go on an international secondment? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you, learn, you learn loads, it's just a great opportunity and you just develop a lot while you're out there. Um, just sort of being uh, sort of on your own but I suppose you're going usually over with other people as well but just being in that different environment is is just very valuable mm -hmm. and particularly with Bentleys everyone there's so you like helpful and sort of friendly that you actually build the relationships quite quickly. Must have been nice having Matt and Bronya who were over here earlier in the year as well. Yeah no I suppose because you always have already have that sort of foothold with people over yeah. there so you're not like really starting from scratch like you might expect so that was sort of an added bonus really. Nice. Oh, I completely agree with Matt um, having having the sort of just speaking to the other secondees, people, especially in this firm, a lot of people have gone on international secondments, many of them to Australia, and just speaking to them before I was going, um, one of the main reservations they had was that it could be very isolating, mm -hmm. just because they went alone, it's the other side of the world, you're yeah. far away from your sort of support network, from your friends, your family, um, so they found it very isolating, whereas for us it was very beneficial that all three of us went, there's Matt and obviously James as well, who's still travelling, he's, he's still floating around Vietnam somewhere. Lucky him. This, lucky, lucky him. <laughs> um, so yeah, for us it was very lucky that we had sort of each other, that yeah. we, we weren't sort of isolated either. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously we had Matt and Bronya who we'd, who we'd met previously and we were good friends with. So having a sort of established network already semi in place and even just going with someone else from work, it was, it was very beneficial. Amazing. And it helped add an extra layer of um, comfort over the whole sort of situation. Um, now one thing we did with Matt and Bronya when we spoke to them last time was a quick fire round. Mm -hmm. 
so we will do that again. Um, so an Aussie barbecue or a Sunday roast? Uh, we're going into winter now, so roast for me. Nice. Aussie barbecue. Love that. Every day. I agree, I agree. Uh, what about the weather, the British weather or the Aussie weather? Aussie weather every uh, time. Silly question. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. a silly question. <laughs> what was your favourite place you visited in Australia? It has to be Az Rock. Uh, that was Amazing. insane. Really good. You know, for me, it was the Whit Sundays. I went on a sort of three day sailing trip around it. It was just beautiful white sand beaches. It was great. So I assume you, you know, enjoyed a bit of the nightlife in Australia. So would you prefer the Australian nightlife or the British nightlife? The Australian nightlife was good. Everywhere sort of in one place, which is quite nice. I would tend to disagree. British nightlife. No wow. Nothing beats a good night out in London. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, what did you find was the most confusing Aussie slang? I think it's just the fact that they call everything football. So the America, uh, Australian rules football is football, rugby's footy, yep. and the only thing that's not football is actual football, which is soccer for some reason. <laughs> yeah. And what about you, Shiv? I think the most confusing thing was how they um, had different measurements for pints in, in pubs. They, they had this thing called a schooner, which is two thirds of a pint. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, it was one of the things that would sort of draw English people to us when we were out there because we were the only ones that were ordering pints and of instantly course. the bartenders were like, oh, you must be from England. <laughs> you're the, the only English people with order pints. Thank you both so much for your time. I think everyone's going to find the conversation really fascinating and hopefully we'll get some more people interested in Acer Comet as well. So thank you. Thank you for thank having you very us. Much. No worries.